Hello, our friends, Hearts Home family. <laughs> Hello there. Hello there. Welcome back. You just now told me it was Hearts Home. I wasn't sure. I put the video together and I, 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 I was all geared up to just tear it up, but it's Hearts Home, so we're going to play nice. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You know, I pop it on her. And actually, I, I was going back and forth in my head on whether this is um, EE Arts or Hearts Home, but there's a lot of other things to talk about on EE Arts. Yeah, so, sure. um, I wanted to talk about the consciousness thing because the guides came up with this uh, again and Cindy just throws out these random nuggets that are just like gems and yet you know it, it's something I've gotten used to over the years um, because you know she is in contact with our guides almost constantly and, and they do chime up at, at times I'll be reading an article and she'll say, the guides say something, and it's like, I didn't even a ask her about anything regarding the article, and they know what I'm reading, and they could read my mind, basically, um, because, again, um, my mind, the thoughts, they're being put out there into the, whatever you want to call this, a, a, a multiverse, whatever the word is that you want to use for, you know, the consciousness that pervades and is everything, ultimately. Um, and they could hear it. It's just that simple. We just think about this when we're in other ages, certainly when we're in a golden age or a silver age, every single thought is a communication. Every single thought. You, you better not have that thought in your mind. Oh, I can't stand her dress or, oh, this guy annoys me because they're going to hear that. <laughs> That is so true. I, I mean, we're learning about this now, and so many people are already uh, reading others' minds, but we're in a place right now <laughs> where, where it's probably not appropriate for, for people to speak up and say, hey, you know, that wasn't very nice, even if you are reading their mind. But, you know, this goes into translation, too, when it comes to translating information that can be weird wonky type of world because what one people have one person has a perception of another might have a different perception of yet it's the same information that is incoming that is being translated so there's a lot uh, out there that we need to work on as individuals you know with our emotions with our healing so whenever somebody says something to you and if that strikes you wrong you know, I always tell people this is inside of you. This is something that you need to look at. That's the emotion speaking up saying, hey, you know, there's something I need to look at. So it doesn't make it necessarily bad or wrong what this other person said. It just you need to go within and find out why. Why did that? Why did that hurt you? Why did that set you off? You know, and we need to keep being more stable and and good, good to ourselves. But by the time we do get in the golden age, the beauty is, is like we've worked through all of our traumas. So we don't have those, <laughs> those weird uh, wonky thoughts come. And then the other thing is when we're, when we're chiming in to our guides, to our angels, um, to the elementals, this world of energy is completely, completely different from just us speaking to you. Because you're getting visions, you're getting uh, pulses of information. And the problem I find over and over again is we were just not given enough vocabulary words to uh, explain what's coming from, from the other side or the other dimensions. But we keep trying. You know, you translate your best and that's all you can do. Absolutely. And again, we want to thank our Patreons for your support over there. We couldn't do it without you guys, and um, there is a spot where you can join for free, and then you just wouldn't get the Patreon-exclusive videos. Or you could join for as little as $1 a month, and we have 261 members that are doing just that. Uh, and then you get all the videos in one place, no commercials. And we want to thank Nancy and Cheryl, our newest patrons. Thank you guys so much for being part of the family. So what triggered this was I came up on this post, which says the shocking official CIA documents on human consciousness that says consciousness is not part of our body at all. Yeah, it's not really. Well, it is and it isn't. So this, this post we don't agree with. I'll just put that straight out there. It's stored in our brain, but not a part of it. Our consciousness, us, is its own being, a ghost version of us. 
Okay. Um, I do appreciate this person's post because they, they are open minded, but I wouldn't agree with that, um, you know, statement because our consciousness is not stored in our brain. And, and I know this from direct experience because I've been, I've had those out of body uh, perceptions where I've looked at my body and known, oh, hey, I'm not the body. And I've heard my guides say, no, you're not your body. And it's, it's a realization that came to me uh, at, at five years old. So it was very early on. It had nothing to do with what I had done in this life. It's past life, uh, past life accumulations. It, it's, you could think of it as, if you want to think of it in terms of video games, it's kind of like as you're going along through the video games, you're leveling up, you're discovering these um, pieces to the puzzle of the game ultimately that benefit you later on down th uh, the line and it, it's like you've uncovered cheat codes so to speak you get new uh, level ups power ups new abilities that stick with you and they might not be completely manifested in each life because each life has a different purpose typically it has a slightly different uh, thing it wants to work on and sometimes you might have amazing gifts in the past life that don't get triggered at all until you're past your, uh, you know, your second Saturn return, right? So, you know, again, uh, it, 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 it's all about what we uh, decided to do. But our consciousness, think of it in terms of everything they've given us. It, it's like you upload things to a cloud. Well, it, it, you know, our consciousness is not uh, just relegated to this body by any way, shape, or form. And it's not dependent on the brain. If you want to talk about what is going to be the new religion that they bring in when they wipe away the old religions, when we talk about the new system coming in, it's going to be a, a religion based on merger with AI and technology. I think that our subconscious plays a huge part in our day-to-day -day activities because that's, that's a memory within the body, within the brain of things that have happened to us. And so many times when something triggers us or something really troubles us, it's that subconscious saying, hey, you know, I've seen this before and it didn't go well. So I don't want to do that again. So I'm here to protect you. And that's something that I think we need to be mindful of moving through life because that will come up over and over again. And sometimes traumas are so bad that you just have these automatic body reactions and you don't have much control over it. But that's a time when you really want to sit down and address these traumas and help work through them because you're not okay with what happened. You shouldn't be okay with what happened. But you do need to find a place where your soul and spirit can find some type of acceptance. And acceptance does not mean okay, ever. But we are going outside. We need to go outside of the subconscious and realize that we're more like antennas. So we're receiving information from the universe and that uh, spiritual practice is what helps us tap into that to that higher mind that higher vibration so we act in that way instead of the lower subconscious which is usually out of fear so you know this is about the gateway experience and here you have again declassified department of the army and it's to the commander u.s army operational group fort meade maryland it's back in uh, 1983 june 9th i was about to graduate Wow. You tasked me to provide an assessment of the gateway experience in terms of its mechanics and ultimate practicality as I set out to fulfill that tasking. Soon became clear that in order to assess the validity and practicality of the process, I need to do enough supporting research and analysis to fully understand how and why the, pr uh, the process works. So, you know, he goes on talking about these particular techniques because it's all about inducing out-of-body states and understanding the reality that we are not the body that's the basic thing we're trying to get to am i the body 
Am I just a body or am I something that's operating the body? Of course, when you look to uh, the Sanatana Dharma, it's clearly said uh, that you are not the body. You know, the body is nothing uh, but a vehicle. As the Bhagavad Gita says, worn out garments are discarded by the user. And it's the same thing with the body. When the body has met its end time, it's no longer going to be useful. And at some point in time, you know, it's time to leave it. Then the soul leaves it and typically will take another form. But it may do so uh, in a, after a period of time because, again, we go through this process of, of really what did we learn and sorting through. And sometimes that may take on this side of things in human terms and 3D terms decades or hundreds of years, literally, before you, you come back and, and do it all over again. Or maybe you will hop a portal and go to a different star system and have an incarnation somewhere else. Uh, these are things that we've learned uh, from our own introspection, from our conversations with our guide, remembrance guides, remembrances of past life. Uh, and many people, and also dealing with you guys, because so many of you guys have had the exact same experiences that we have. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, you know, and... One thing about it out there, it can be a really lonely world because people just they they can't really relate to other people. When you are on a spiritual journey and that veil has definitely been thinned and you look around into the mainstream, into the world, you simply cannot relate any longer because you see the depths of how things really are and you're not okay with going going along with everything you have changed and and one very difficult thing that happens also on an awakening is you lose friends you lose very dear friends you lose people in your life that were so extremely close at one time and point but it's like our vibration changes and we move away it's like we really don't have anything in common any longer with that person And that's a very hard thing to deal with. You know, it's loaded full of of guilt and sorrow because they were so very, very close. But understand you're growing, you're growing, you're expanding. And it's probably going to be better for that person because if you were that close, they're definitely keeping an eye on you and they're watching you and you might help them awaken as well. Absolutely. So what this is, as far as the gateway, um, the gateway technique, it, it, it's brain hemisphere synchronization technique. Um, and, you know, yeah, there are articles you could read about that. And it's not really our purpose to give you any one technique. We don't want to give you any one model because there's no one size that fits all. And, you know, again, we could have, if we were more about becoming rich in this world, which we're not, because we, we just want to be able to get by and, and, basically give the lessons we need share the information we need to uh help others heal where they need to and you know we have no need to be a bill gates we have no desire to be corrupted by uh material things to that high degree or have the temptation to so this is why we we don't you know do our own systems and you know trademark it and go ahead patent it or what have you and then sell it Um, Because, again, everybody is different. We're all unique. And, you know, something might suit you better than something else. You know, maybe for you uh, meditating by a candle, maybe for somebody else using a mantra time and time again. Mantras work for me better. Um, But again, sometimes they don't. You know, sometimes it's like I feel that itch and need to just move. So then I'll do qigong and you know again every there's all these different techniques that are available and and each has to find what works for them and it's good to use multiple techniques because again just just like uh everything our own moods uh our body chemistry uh you know again the influence of the stars all those things are constantly changing so so is our consciousness so what works today may totally fail tomorrow but it might work in a week again so it's good to delve deep you know find for yourself um, what works for you and when it works for you the takeaway here though is is the reality that yes it you know it does seem that consciousness is not limited to being inside a body or a brain in fact again as cindy was saying 
you know, the brain's kind of like, it's, it's like an operating system for the body itself. Uh, but consciousness, as we know, just even from all the documented cases of people that were clinically dead and they could describe, well, that nurse over there went over here, this doctor left over there, that doctor came in, you know, they could describe exactly what happened when they're totally under. And, and you know, I've, I've had friends that have died and come back and they were totally changed because, again, they they knew they remembered uh, that they're not the body. So it didn't really worry them anymore when they face these uh, scary situations that we can face. So this is Niels Bohr. Everything we call real is made of things that cannot be regarded as real. If quantum mechanics hasn't profoundly shocked you yet, you haven't understood it yet. And yet, you know, quantum mechanics, quantum physics is, is definitely under attack as everything, everything that comes under the system's uh, watchful eye gets distorted and twisted. Again, they then tempt people that are looking to uncover the truths of the universe and they'll offer them things like funding, you know, they'll offer them things like well, we could offer you with a lab. Of course, you're going to need a new home. We have a, a wonderful place over here. It's only 10,000 square feet. I hope it'll it'll do for you and your family. Don't worry. You'll never need anything again. This is exactly what they do. And then, you know, oh, well, we don't want you sharing this. Uh, maybe you could say it this way. The system just distorts. It, it It changes everything to suit itself because ultimately, again, the system is a lie and it is one that is it's just it's affected everything on this planet you know every single religious tradition has been affected by the system i just wanted to bring up this part electrons could jump from one orbit to another because it made me think again that as above so below and when we see planets and and suns or stars and we see Tiamat and the destruction of Tiamat. And Tiamat jumped to another orbit as Earth. Again, we this is one of the ways you can test is something probably right, you know. And, and it, you know, again, if it l is something that we can clearly see in the microcosm and the macrocosm and they're in agreement, then it's probably correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's certain ways to sift through and get the information that you need for yourself so you can understand where you stand in life. And, and one, one thing that I just think is kind of fun to do uh, when I'm uh, observing and watching the puppies and where information comes from and how it comes to you is, we'll say Rama might be laying outside in the sun and Sita is in here with me and she might get a little teeny tiny treat well, Rama is all the way out there in the sun, but you know what? He'll be here in about 60 seconds because he just got the information that Sita got a treat. And these guys do this time and time again. But we always looked, I love looking to animals to help um, further myself because they're, they're the ones who are uh, communicating in a higher manner. They don't use words like we do. They use their mind. They use picking up energies. They use their instincts. They use a different modality than we do. And that's why, you know, our pets are so, so valuable, so important. They truly are our angels in fur. And we just, I think we just need to be a better, uh, a better, um, help them have better outcomes there's just too many pets that are out there without homes or being abused and are not treated right um and we can do better as as humans they animals give us their all and a, as humans I, I think we could do a lot better by them absolutely you know ultimately you know the mystic experience the the mystic vision uh you know there are again these mystery traditions which defy the orthodox view um and again you know the orthodox view is again the the, the structured view of the system there they are always about selling us and so you know if 
you had the point of view that you are simply having a human experience, which is the reality that after this human experience, you'll move on and you might do it again. You might not. There's no control over you in that. And this is why they've formulated the religions of control. This is why you have, you know, Christianity and Islam. And it's even interesting because in some forms of, of uh, Judaism, especially ancient Judaism, uh, you'll find, and again, there, there's not agreement in, in any of these, uh, even the big uh, monotheistic religions or uh, quote-unquote monotheistic because they're not really monotheistic when you get to it you find out that Allah you know the root word of Allah is Elohim which is plural again and you know it, it's it's all a distortion it really truly is a distortion but what we find is they want to hide the fundamental nature of ourselves which our fundamental nature is our consciousness it's it's not the body the body is, again, a temporary uh, vehicle. So when we look at things like a ghost version of us, well, yeah, there are ghosts. And sometimes consciousness, which, again, the part that is us having this experience is just that. It's a part of the higher self. It's like a fractal of our own higher self. And our own higher self is a fractal of source. And... And again, when we're in this creation, we're going through the lens of this creator. Now, Cindy and I, uh, we view the creator of this universe uh, with the label uh, Vishnu you know, with, from the Hindu tradition. But yet that's just one term you, you know, for this particular uh, consciousness. And certainly it wouldn't be uh, Vishnu from you know, necessarily every planet that's out there and not even, you know, every tribe on earth would. As, as again, these are just labels to be utilized by the humans to, to kind of say, oh, well, this is what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about the creator of this universe. And, and so, you know, again, it's just a term. And in many ages, we don't even verbalize things. We're just always thinking. We're communicating telepathically. So, you know, again, the distortions that we have, it is possible through a traumatic death that there is a ghost version of us and in, in that the, the spirit doesn't go on to do a regular normal life review and then decide. You know, sometimes it takes a while and sometimes it takes a while for us to realize even what happened when we died. And part of it is because of the distortion of the system giving us these false belief sets, uh, making us think that we're something that we're not, or we're more limited than we are, or that we're dependent on somebody else uh, as to what happens to us. The reality is, no, it's all up to us. It's all up to us. The only one that judges us is us. Mm -hmm. I mean, our our belief system, that's why... That's why the, the basic control system, they, they love to harness our belief system because that's the most powerful system besides our desire to eat food and drink water. I mean, those are basic instincts and breathe air. The belief system is right up there when it comes to controlling people. And that's the one thing that we are trying to help people find out is realize how important that belief system is and are you believing things that are limiting you are you believing things that are holding you in fear are you believing things that are not allowing you to live the best expansive life that you possibly can absolutely so yeah our, our consciousness well consciousness is us that's the real us and consciousness this is uh schrodinger cannot be accounted for in physical terms as we know it for consciousness is absolutely fundamental that means there's nothing that comes before consciousness consciousness is was and always will be this is why you know just even the term your maker meet your maker well it's you it's the you that you don't understand in, when you're in this body and when you're under these false belief systems you know, consciousness always was. This is, again, what's meant by before Abraham was, I am. 
you know, it, there, there are so many things which are so easily accept, explainable that are given as, oh, divine mysteries only God can know. Well, only you and your higher self can know if you are wrapped up in the system to the point where you actually believe this system. Awareness is always self-awareness, since there is only one. And just like we see oceans that all connect at some point through some way, uh, it's the same thing with the rain falling down. Each one of us is a drop of rain in the bigger ocean of consciousness. And I really can't uh, think of a better way to explain it as far as an analogy. Right. Uh, analogies are great. And the one that I really like is all rivers lead to the same ocean, but all rivers are very unique and diverse and have different elements, but they all go to the same place. Absolutely. So look forward to your comments. Thank you guys for being part of this family. Much love, source bless, and namaste. Namaste.